for the next 20 minutes, you've got two options. One, sit there, kind of shake, keep the food digesting from lunch, get a little lazy eye, check those Facebook notifications, make sure you got that Snapchat filter, figured out the Kara told you about yesterday. Um, or we can shake off that fatita, fajita fatigue and uh, tune in a little bit, because uh, I'm gonna give you a couple really simple strategies on how to get a leg up on that other team in town that we all know is just the worst. <laughs> So that, that kid is out there. You know, that kid that's gonna hit that growth spurt, come to your age group championship meet, make it look like a leisurely paddle, anchor your 400 free relay instead of that other team. That kid is out there. He's not a swimmer yet, but his parents are gonna look for a swim team. Um, you know, parents are looking for a swim team way more than ever before, believe it or not. Um, in Rio, Google searches for swimming plus team or more than double what they were in Athens, Beijing, or London. Similarly, searches on swimtoday.org have increased every year, increasing from 2014 to 2015, and then doubling in 2016. So that kid is there. You just gotta know how to bring him to your team and make sure there's someone for your 400 free relay and not that other team's. So what can you really do about it? I'm gonna make it pretty simple. Three, two, one. Three things you can do two things USA Swimming is doing for you, and one thing we all need to be doing. So we're gonna start with you. And the first is focusing on the summer. This might seem pretty uh, counter or intuitive, but uh, parents search for a swim team in June, July, and August. That's not surprising. Uh, what is surprising is that it's almost exclusively in June, July, and August. This is when people are outside, it's hot, they're going to community pools, swimming is on TV, you have the eyes, you have the audience, this is when parents are in tune, and this is when you need to be doing whatever it is you're doing. Um, we're not gonna get into so granular of exactly what you need to be doing compared to another team, but whatever that unique thing that your team is doing to drive new memberships, it needs to be released in June, July, and August. If you only got one good idea, that's okay. We just gotta get a little bit more specific with your timing. Uh, searches peak during that major meet during the summer. Um, whether it's 2015 Nationals or Trials in the Games last summer, again, not surprising, but this is when you have the eyes. This is the time to roll out that new social campaign that you started planning here at SwimBiz. This is the time to launch that Try It Week, Try It For A Day. Um, you wanna capitalize right when those eyes are on swimming and when people are thinking about swimming. If you wanna get even more granular with your timing, you can focus on a breakout performance. Uh, this summer, when Simone Manuel won the 100 meter free gold for the, um, in the Olympics, there was a lot of attention focused around first African American women, woman winning the 100 freestyle. You know, we looked at this and said, this is an opportunity for us. This is something that we weren't anticipating. We didn't have content in the can. We weren't ready for this. But we said, we need to work right now to create content that says to those parents that wouldn't normally be tuning in, but you know, since it's on the news, it's on websites that swimming's not usually on, we have all these parents' attention. So we basically created content and said, do you want your kid to be the next Simone Manuel? And of course, a lot of parents did. And so we saw a direct spike with this. We created that call to action. If you want your kid to be the next Simone Manual, visit swimtoday.org and look for a team in your area. And based on that content, in the four days following Simone's performance, we saw over 23,000 searches on swimtoday.org. Now that far outpaced the rest of the games, so it wasn't just the Olympics, it wasn't even Phelps, this was something totally different, and it was three times the searches we got during all of Olympic trials. Now, we could have just sat there and said, oh, this is great, this is gonna drive a lot of searches, but instead we created content, we jumped on a current event, and we said, we need to take advantage of this, and it, we had a lot of success because of that. So, you know, obviously this particular event won't happen again, but when you're looking to roll out those campaigns, you're looking to roll out your new idea, do it during the summer, do it during a major meet, and be prepared, think on your toes, and take advantage of those content ideas that come when there's these breakout performances because that next swimmer's coming, you know it's gonna happen, there's gonna be a record-breaking performance, news will be about it, and it's your job to take that and make it work for you. So you've got the timing down, you know kind of what you're gonna do for this recruitment, but you really gotta tell people exactly what you want them to do. Before you decide exactly what you're gonna tell people, you gotta know who you're talking to. 
Again, this isn't surprising, but the majority of parents that are searching for a swim team online are moms. Um, you know, don't forget about the dads, but over two, about two thirds of them are moms. So that's your audience. When you're designing content for social media, when you're creating a call to action to join your team, whatever you're doing, keep in mind that your audience is moms and that it needs to cater directly to them. Now, you wanna get really specific when you decide what you want to tell them to do. An example of this is what we did last summer with the Swim Today campaign. We knew that we wanted to drive all of our searches to swimtoday.org. There's two ways that people can, or parents can search for a swim team, and that's usaswimming.org and swimtoday.org. We have a lot more control over swimtoday.org in terms of art and updating that, so we created, we reskinned the whole site, a lot of American flags, a lot of Olympic type imagery, patriotic, and we said, you know, if someone watching the Olympics that isn't currently involved in swimming wants to look into swimming, where do we want to send them? We want to send them to swimtoday.org because we've got content on there specifically for them. You know, this is the first point. This is what we want people to see. So we created a really clear call to action. It was find a team near you by visiting swimtoday.org. And we just beat the crap out of this. We put it on social posts. We put it on press releases, videos, you name it. Whatever was coming from the Swim Today campaign at some point said find a team near you by visiting swimtoday.org. And it had a huge impact. You know, if you look at the blue line here, this is usaswimming.org team searches. We know that there's that Olympic bump that exists where we can do nothing, sit back, and more people are gonna be interested in swimming. And you can see that in the first bump is trials and the larger bump for blue is the Olympics. So that does exist. But the bump from the red line, which is from today.org, you know, traditionally those searches are actually lower and we created this enormous spike because no matter what person out there in our audience saw any social post, any piece of content that we came, all of it said the same thing. It said, go to swimtoday.org and search for a team. And that's how we drove these spikes. So whatever you're gonna do, you need to make sure that you make it very simple and clear and that no matter what person at any point during your campaign for membership sees it, they're getting the same message and going to the same place that you're trying to send them. Now, of all the three things that you can do, I think this is the most important, and that's updating your website. What do parents do after they search for a swim team on either of those places? They scroll through the results, they're looking, they're trying to eliminate some right away, they want to focus on evaluating a few teams, and how do they do that? Well, you might think they email the club, and that's true, some people do. Call the club to speak with a coach or a team administrator to get more information. Very surprisingly, very few of them visit the club's social media. So not to downplay the social media presentations or anything here, but that's not gonna be your first point of contact. What they do is click on your club's website link and go and look at your club's page. Now you're probably thinking, great, perfect. The website has everything. It's got coaching profiles, all about our team. Anything you want people to know about your team is gonna be on your website. But here's the problem. Three out of the four parents looking at your website are doing so on a mobile device, and that's a phone or a tablet. Specifically with phones, over two thirds of them. Now if you don't see the problem, this is what your website looks like on a mobile phone. Now this is my old team, so I can pick on them. Um, but you know, if you look at this website, my old team is trying to tell you something very specific in the bottom right hand corner. They've highlighted some text in green. They, they want you to look at this, this is very important. Can anyone in the back of the room tell me what that green highlighted text says? Can anyone even in the front of the room tell me what that says? Exactly. This is what a parent sees when they're visiting your website. This is the first touch point that you have with those parents. You've got three inches by six inches on a mobile phone to make that first impression, and that's so crucial. Now, it gets worse. The average page visit for a website lasts less than a minute, and people typically read less than a quarter of the text on that page. So not only do you have to capture them right away, but whatever you want them to know, whatever that come and try it for a day, try it for a week, bring a friend, you know, CAP program, whatever your particular membership drive is, it needs to be on your website and you need to think about communicating that on a mobile screen. It needs to be up top in big letters, very simple. That's your first impression and you only get one of them. Now you're probably sitting out there and saying, hey buddy, isn't this your job? You're supposed to be doing this for us. And it is, and so we've got a few things that USA Swimming is doing for you to make this easier. And the first is continuing the Swim Today campaign. Uh, we've seen tremendous growth with this campaign, tremendous success with it, so we're gonna continue doing this. 
for the next year at least, um, hopefully longer. Uh, we started the campaign in 2014, and over the first two years, we focused on our new tagline, the funnest sport there is. Um, we know it's not real grammar, but uh, that's part of it. Uh, you know, at the beginning, it's smiling faces. It's showing that the, the team side of it, the goofy side, light colors. Um, and, and we saw a lot of success with that. But going into the Olympics last year, we knew that we needed to change things up a little bit and take advantage of that patriotic fandom that we get every four years. So we created our Swim United campaign. Now, this campaign took a little bit darker tone, as you can see, a little bit more serious. Uh, it was really in line with the Olympics, American flags, Americana, that type of thing. The important distinguishment last year was that we got our national team athletes involved for the first time. So we were sitting there and thinking, OK, what do we need to do for 2017? We don't have the luxury of the Olympics. We're not going to have that natural attention. We need to really get in front of people's attention. And we, said, you know, we sat down, a few of us, two heads are better than one, three heads are better than two. And we said, you know what would be even better? 3,000. So we surveyed all of the USA Swimming teams. And I'm sure a lot of you in this room participated in this survey. And the theme of the survey was comparing Funnest Sport and Swim United campaigns. And there were two questions in particular on that survey that were really eye-opening. And they had to do with which campaign best represents the realities of the sport and which campaign appeals more to a non-swimmer. Now, in both cases, the funnest sport campaign actually won out and overwhelmingly in appealing to a non-swimmer. So we knew we needed to go back to that funnest sport, showing the fun side of swimming and keeping that imagery light and airy. However, people overwhelmingly supported having the national team athletes involved. So, this summer for 2017, if my clicker will work. There it goes. Uh, we're going to return to the funnest sport messaging, bad grammar and all, uh, but we'll continue to integrate the national team athletes. Now, we have a photo shoot actually this Wednesday where we're going to start creating this imagery, creating our content, and then we'll start rolling that out this summer during those all important June, July, and August months. Now, you can take advantage of this in two main ways. The first is to follow Swim Today on social media. And the second is to steal it all. You know, we have social media posts, videos. Everything that we do for this campaign is focused on recruiting and getting new swimmers involved in the sport. So there's ready-made posts for you to comment on, share on your page, add some your personal flavor to, put out there to your membership, to your swimmers, to your parents, um, and, and really get them excited about getting new people involved in the sport. And more importantly, showing them the fun side of the sport where you're having fun, you're blowing bubble rings, you're goofing off with your friends. You're not just head down looking at that black line, swimming back and forth. So you can do that online and on social media, but we also have some ways that you can, that we have some physical tools for you to use in person. Um, and that takes the form of the Swim Today promotional kits. We've done the promotional kits for three years now. Uh, they've changed a little bit from year to year. Uh, we started with just a section of the USA Swimming teams. We've moved that recently up into distributing them to all the USA Swimming teams. And you know, the, the contents have varied year to year, but the one thing through the survey and then just through talking to people that we really hear that's the most successful is the posters that are involved in the kits. So, like I said, with the, with the survey, we asked people, are these kits actually helpful when you're recruiting? And um, thankfully, two thirds of people said that they are. So we said, this is something that, you know, it's not working for everyone, but it's working for the majority of people and it's something we want to continue to keep around. And most importantly, involved in those kits, we want to have those posters continuing to come out. So that's some of the imagery you saw before. That's where we start with our creative thought process. So, You'll get these posters as a USA Swimming team. You'll have the opportunity. I really encourage you to use them. People say that they put them in schools. They put them in community centers. Um, it's, it gets people thinking about swimming when they might not normally be thinking about it. Um, and, and more importantly, it, it, it brings them to your team specifically if you take the sep second step and visit the Swim Today store. Now, in the Swim Today store, this is through the Swim Today website, you can go on and take all the same posters that we create and send out with the promotional kits but you can add your customized information to the bottom that has your team on there, your contact information, your logo. So now you're taking that second step, and when people are starting to think about swimming in a school, thinking about looking for a team in the area, that first touch point has your specific information, and they start the evaluation process with your team instead of generally just thinking about swimming. We also have things like sh these splash cards, share cards, where you can put your same customized information and really use your swimmers as your messenger out there. And, and that 
touch point actually brings me to the last point, which is the one thing that we all need to be doing. We need to make something, swimming, make swimming worth talking about. Um, all the research that we've done with Swim Today, year over year, uh, we keep finding this same bit of information, that it's not actually the parents driving the decision making here, it's the kids. If your kid comes home from school and says, I want to try karate, you say, great, you know, I, I don't know anything about karate, I, I didn't do karate, but let me hop on the internet, look for places to do karate in the neighborhood, and, and then you sign your kid up. It's the exact same thing with swimming. It's the kids driving that decision making for the family, and they get that by talking to the other kids. So you want to create an environment on your team that really makes it fun and something worth talking about outside of the pool. For this, think greased pumpkin on Halloween, think surprise sharks and minnow games, team trips to events or different sporting events, or talk to me about hosting a swim jitsu. It doesn't get much more unique than putting an aquatic obstacle course in your pool and letting your team go through it. So to review, three things you can do. Whatever your membership opportunity is, and I've seen a lot of great ones with the Club Marketing Awards that we'll see tonight. You know, a lot of teams have great ideas on how to bring people in. But make sure when you're deploying that, you do it in those all important summer months and really capitalize on the major events and the major performances within those events. Once you have the timing down, you gotta tell people exactly what you wanna do simply and consistently and really drive that into their heads. You know, the pace that social media works today Things are scrolling through Twitter, Instagram feed is gone. Who knows how the Facebook algorithm works anymore for the news feed? You can never find what you're looking for. So you need to continually put this out there. You can't just put one or two posts together and put them out there and hope that parents are taking that and, and really getting the message. It needs to constantly be out there doing the same action. So no matter when that parent comes in and sees your content, they're all taking that same action. Once you have that down, update your website. Remember, you've got three inches by six inches. You don't want people squinting. You've got one chance at this first impression, and that's where, that's where people are seeing it the majority of the time. Uh, when you look to USA Swimming, we're creating these campaigns with you in mind. Take the, take the posts, take the video content, put your own spin on it, um, but, but use the things that we're creating. That's why we're putting in the time to create these. Um, sign up to receive a promotional kit. That's a layup. You just get some stuff that you can put up, get parents interested in the team, visit the Swim Today store to take that second step and have parents thinking about your team specifically. And then most importantly, make swimming something worth talking about. Like I said, that kid is out there. And if your kids on your team go to school and say, man, that, that week was just amazing. We, we played sharks and minnows on Tuesday. We got some jitsu coming to town this Saturday. Next month, we're all going to a concert or a White Sox game or something like that. You know, that kid's going to be beaming at school. And there's going to be kids listening and thinking about the sport of swimming. And one of those kids might be that kid that can go to that age group meet, be on your 400 free relay. And that's your opportunity. You need your swimmers to be your messenger and really promote your team, because that's what drives the searches and drives the parents to your team. <laughs>